I've talked before about my love-hate relationship with meat. Love the taste, hate the environmental impact, and the possible health issues, depending on whether the latest study says meat will kill me or make me live forever. But soon, I and others like me might be able to get the best of both worlds. As Adam Riley shows us, real meat, no animal required. Do you see these nice long fibers of muscle here yep. and this marbling with the fat? To say Kevin Kit Parker is comfortable with animal protein would be an understatement. He grew up eating barbecue in Tennessee, taught a barbecue class at Harvard, and helped launch this smoker startup in Central Square. This brisket has really tough collagen that holds the fibers of the meat together. But as a professor of bioengineering and applied physics, Parker is also part of a push that could change our understanding of meat altogether. This is the goal for lab-grown meat, having something like this. That phrase again is lab-grown meat. It sounds like science fiction, but at Parker's Harvard lab, a couple miles to the northwest, it's becoming a reality. Something that is edible and gives you 20% of the proteins that you would in a normal brisket, we could get there in the short term. Um, short term meaning a year from now, two years from now? That kind of time frame. Luke McQueen is a Harvard research associate and the lead author of a study detailing the breakthrough Parker's team achieved. It works like this. Grant's feeding the gelatin solution in there and it's spitting out fibers. Those gelatin fibers don't look especially appealing, but once they've dried, they can be shaped into an edible scaffolding that resembles a cut of meat and then seeded with cells from an animal. When that happens, McQueen says, the cells feel right at home, thanks to both geometry and chemistry. Collagen is part of the matrix or glue that, that holds our tissues together. And when you cook it, it becomes gelatin. So when we make our fibers out of gelatin, the muscle cells recognize that it's gelatin. So they stick to it and they grow within it. Yielding meat that isn't just made of chicken cells, but actually looks and feels like chicken. With one huge caveat, no bird was killed to create it. McQueen says with a little bit of refinement, the method could yield a lot of food. And that, Parker says, is where things get really wild. Imagine that you make a filet mignon, and rather than using beef fat, you build it with fish fat. So you have omega-3 fatty acids, which have all different types of health, de uh, health benefits. So would consumers actually buy it and eat it? Parker says since the study was published, he's heard from multiple would-be investors, and he makes a gentle point for the squeamish. The only people that complain about lab meat are usually the folks that have never been to a meat processing plant. A place that this technology could reinvent. Adam Riley joins me. I almost understand this, which is stunning. I don't know anything about science. Me so neither. they didn't create, invent the whole notion of lab-grown meat. No, These this guys. idea has been kicking around for a while. Winston Churchill back in 1931, right. I had not known this, was positing the idea of having chicken without the chicken. He thought it would happen by the early 80s. He was wrong there. What did he know There's a company it? called, I have no way, and actually that's a great mystery. <laughs> These guys are fascinated with where he got the idea. Uh -huh. uh, there's a company called Aleph Farms. They're Israeli. They 3D printed meat in space recently. They're trying to make a fake steak. Tyson, the agribusiness giant, recently bought a steak in a company called Memphis Meats, which is trying to do something similar. So no, this, they are not the only ones working on it. So this. what's the value added with them, though? What are they doing? As I understand it, and I'm right there with you when it comes to science, what they have shown is that you can make these scaffoldings from gelatin, or you can make it from other stuff like animal proteins. Uh, you can make a lot of these fibers at a very low cost in a way that makes it commercially viable to create what looks like meat and feels like meat but isn't meat. So I think it's the, the ease of generating what they've generated. Okay, and now the only question that matters at all, yep. would you eat it? I would absolutely positive. You would? Because I'm a very guilty carnivore. I'm one of these people who feels guilty if I think about the animal I'm eating, but I end up eating meat anyway. I would totally give this a shot. So then since you said it, I have to lie and say I would too. Yeah, very enlightening. Thank you very much, Adam. That's a great package.